The goal of the volleyball problem was to revisit two topics. First, operational definitions. Second, rescaling. In the case of the volleyball problem, the constructs that needed to be operationally defined were fair teams and volleyball playing ability. And rescaling involved measures about running, jumping, serving, spiking, and returning serves. Notice that in the volleyball problem, most students who work on this problem begin by developing some sort of index of volleyball playing ability. However, as students work on the volleyball problem, they usually notice that fair teams do not necessarily result from the two-step process of one ranking players from best to worst based on information from tryouts and two dealing out players to teams like dealing out playing cards when playing card games such as hearts or rummy. One reason this is true is because a good team needs to have players who have a strong mix of abilities. For example, a team with six great servers or six great defenders is not necessarily a good team. But because ranking players tends to be an important part of most students' solutions to the volleyball problem, it is worth examining here. To look more closely at rescaling issues that arise in the volleyball problem, it is useful to examine results from this Tinker Plot Sampler. It generates tryout information about 10 volleyball players. It gives information about jumping, running, serving, returning, and spiking. And it also gives a score from 1 to 5 that depends on coaches' comments. Notice that, in the volleyball problem that you worked on in class only, qualitative information was given for serving, returning, and coaches' comments. So, in order to combine this information from data about running and jumping, it is necessary to quantify this qualitative information. But, even after all of the information is in a quantitative form, difficulties continue to arise. For example, running scores are in seconds, whereas jumping scores are in inches. And, trying to combine inches and seconds is like trying to combine apples and oranges. It doesn't make much sense, especially because low scores are good for running, but high scores are good for jumping. So, to combine such scores, it is necessary to rescale them in some way. This graph shows another reason why it is necessary to rescale the information that is given in the volleyball problem. That is, the measures for jumping are between 75 and 90, whereas, the scores for other attributes are in the interval from 1 to 10. So, if you combine such scores by simply adding, then jumping scores get much more weight than scores of other factors, just because the jumping scores involve larger numbers. To examine rescaling issues more closely, it is useful to look at a situation that is both simpler and more familiar than the volleyball problem. This Tinker Plot sampler generates information about test scores for 26 students in a class. For simplicity, the students' names have been replaced by that initials A through Z. And, scores are given for only three tests. Using this Tinker Plot sampler, it is possible to see results from any number of such classes. And, we can graph the results from the test simply by dragging down data from the table. When students work on the volleyball problem, there are several popular ways that they tend to rescale the data. Some simply treat all of the measures as scores and add them. Others convert the scores to ranks, first, second, third, and so on. Or others convert the scores to grades A, B, C, D, and F, or 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Still others simply assign high, middle, or low scores to each student. Or some convert the scores to percentile scores, or z-scores, or scores on an interval from zero to some value, n, which will give more or less weight to the different tests.
for example, if test 1 and test 2 were both midterm examination, and if test 3 was a final examination, then you might want score on the final examination to count more than scores on the midterm examinations. If you graph the results of each of these transformations, you can see how students' ranking in the class moves up or down compared to others. Using one method, student X might have been equal to student Y but, using another method, students X and Y might no longer be the same. You will hear more about z-scores later. For now, let's see what happens when you switch from one method to another, and when you combine these rankings for all three texts. Notice that the students who rank at the top or bottom using one method often change their rankings significantly when other methods of scaling are used. So, as you can see from these graphs, the final grades that students get in a class depend strongly on how the tests are rescaled. To make it even easier to see how results vary significantly, depending on how the data are scaled, you can use this slider to quickly switch from one method to another. Notice how much the ranking of students depends on which whether their test scores were scaled from 0 to 10, or converted to percentile scores, or ranked from first to last, or marked high, middle or low, or assigned grades from A to F, or converted to Z scores. Then. Notice how even more changes can be made depending on how much weight is assigned to each test. For example, notice what happens when half as much weight is assigned to the first test, but twice as much weight is assigned to the third test. This Tinker Plots sampler shows that similar differences occur in the volleyball problem. For example, Watch what happens when we compare the way volleyball players are ranked if their scores are ranked first to last versus if their scores are assigned grades A to F or different weights are assigned to defend information from the tryouts. The point of all of these examples is that results of statistical analyses can be radically influenced by two factors. First, the results can be influenced by how important attributes are operationally defined. And second, the results also can be influenced by how the data are scaled. These two factors will continue to be important throughout other topics that we will investigate in this course.